On your mark, get set. Let's go. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Mister, will you please wake up? Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Good morning. Kevin Durant, you should have never left California. This bronze sexual upset me in oh, having no. to bring this a teenage idiot from Wisconsin into a sports conversation. Are you really surprised that the Cowboys are giving up on Ezekiel Elliott? Oh, hell no. Well, no one cares about baseball. Bitch, are you for real? This is for my honey, Jody, who is feeling ill this morning. She is at home, and I need everyone in the audience to do me a favor. Keep her in in your prayers as we try to figure out what's going on. And I can't wait to see my honey back on her feet, uh, moving around. But she is feeling ill. She she started feeling ill yesterday. And uh, like I said, she's home today. She's going to get a uh, COVID test, and let's pray that it's not COVID that she has. Love you, Jody, very much. That's for you. With all that, good morning. Welcome to the late starting Taco Tuesday edition of Snowman in the Morning. I overslept, had to fly to get my, uh, my daughter Came home late, had a little breakfast, checked on my wife. We're here. It's time to roll. What the hell happened in Orchard Park, New York last night? Will Lutz hit a walk-off field goal as time expired to give the Denver Broncos a 24-22 win on Monday Night Football. First off, I must apologize for making a very foolish comparison. In the early stages of his career, you know what? I in the early stages of his career, I compared Josh Allen to the legendary Jim Kelly. Once again, Ron White said it best. That's profiling, and profiling is wrong. Man, what the hell was I thinking? Sean McDermott is nowhere near Marv Levy. And Josh Allen is nowhere near Jim Kelly. I apologize to Bill's Mafia for making that foolish, stupid comparison. And to think these Bills, defending division champions... defending division champions, I picked them to win the division walking away. Man, they're not even going to be close. If they don't clean up their act, the Broncos have won three straight and four of six since they got blown to smithereens by Miami. And they're carrying momentum of a 24 to nine victory over the defending world champion, Kansas City Chiefs which ended a 16-game skid against their rival. Russell Wilson said, quote, We believe in each other. We believe in what we can do. To beat the Chiefs, to beat these guys, it sets a standard of who we should be, who we can be, and who we're go- we are going to be. Close quote. Um, Russell Wilson. <laughs> we got to Keep winning, and maybe I'll buy that statement. As far as the Buffalo Bills go, you need a new offensive coordinator because Ken Dorsey, former quarterback at the University of Miami, ain't cutting it. Again, they failed to score 26 points for the sixth straight game. 
It's Buffalo's worst stretch since Allen's rookie year in 2018. Sean McDermott said, quote, I'm confident, but I believe we can be better at the same time. Close quote. Duh! Did you see your team last night? They didn't get the lead until late in the fourth quarter, and I'm talking about beyond the two-minute warning. They were inside of two minutes, and they couldn't stop the Broncos? Really? The most inept team in the NFL? Well, they, they're not that inept right now. They're four and five, and they've won two straight on the road. And again, this is at this streak has happened after they got blown to smithereens by 50 points against the Miami Dolphins. And the play that gave the Broncos a second chance was a penalty against the Buffalo Bills for having too many, for having 12 men on the field. This is after Wilson took a knee and the scramble drill commenced. It was a final play. It was the final play of the game. Denver had no timeouts. Buffalo had no timeouts. And if Buffalo had a timeout, they probably would have used it to get organized. <clears throat> Will Lutz misses the first attempt. Flags fly. Too many men on the field against Buffalo. He gets a second attempt from 36 yards and drills it as time expires. You let a team... I'm, I'm so disappointed in the Buffalo Bills. You let the Denver Broncos gain confidence on their season by coming into your house and walking off as time expires. You're not a playoff contender, Buffalo. Not at all. Not at all. And Sean McDermott, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for letting this game get away. You ought to be ashamed of yourself and Ken Dorsey, too, for your offense not performing in the red zone like you need to. Only red zone score came in the fourth period to give you a short-lived lead. And when I say short live, I'm talking to, I'm talking a hundred seconds. You led this game for one hundred set for for ninety nine seconds because the hundredth second is when the ball sailed through the uprights against Will uh, for Will Lutz. And again, you don't have a running game. You have a running back in James Cook, but you don't use him. Fool. Wilson, 24 of 29, 193 yards. He threw two touchdowns, was sacked four times. Let's look at Josh Allen's stats. 15 of 26, 177 yards. He threw a touchdown plus two interceptions. James Cook carried the ball 12 times for 109 yards, including a 42-yard run. Well, it's about time you had a 100-yard rusher. You rushed for 192 yards and lost. You sacked Russell Wilson four times and lost. Two interceptions will do that to you. Through two interceptions. This is in this. This is grounds for dismissal. You gained 369 yards, Buffalo. 177 yards through the air. You turned the ball over four times. Four times. Two fumbles, two interceptions. That's not the Buffalo Bills that I know. And Joshua... At, mm, I'm going to say four words that will probably piss off Bill's Mafia, but it needs to be said. Josh Allen is regressing right before our eyes. That offensive line is becoming more and more porous. That offensive line is just... 
That offensive line is a sieve. It's looking like the Bears off. Well, let me not compare that because Buffalo has actually won five games. But still, to compare this particular team to the to the K-Gun era, that was stupid of me to do so. That was absolutely stupid of me to, to do so. And Josh Allen... You're not good. Any, I won't even say anymore. You're not good. Now, granted, this is the first time in a while you weren't the leading rusher, and you only rushed four times for 13 yards and gained and, and got a touchdown. But you're not good anymore. You've regressed. And unless Ken Dorsey fixes the holes in that offense, you're going to continue to regress. You are going to continue to regress unless you continue to lean on James Cook, you continue to develop your running game, and you in and y'all fix that offensive line and give Josh Allen a clean pocket. Did you see some of the reads that he's made, especially on those two interceptions? Come on now. Danny Fuller, every team, every team has a slump every this year, but to lose the way they did last night is unexcusable. You know, you know, what's on, you know, what's unexcusable. The Buffalo bills playing the way they're playing this year. This is not the mark of a defending division champion. This is not the mark of a team. Well, you know what, you know, when this slump started, you want to call it a slump? Fine. I'll grant you a slump, but you know, when it started January, when they got socked in the mouth, by the Cincinnati Bengals in their own house. Joe, Joe Cool 2.0 came into Buffalo and punched him in the mouth and kicked him in the ass. 27 to 10. That is when this slump started. Then, of course, you had all the to do with Stefan Diggs, who couldn't make up his mind whether he loved or hated Josh Allen. And they still don't have a running game. <clears throat> I harp on this a lot, but it needs to be harped on. You're not going to go anywhere unless you have a consistent running game. Josh Allen, you're nowhere near Patrick Mahomes. Period. Seven starters on defense are out. Next man up. That's my response. Next man need to, needs to step up. He also fumbled twice, Josh Allen. Man, this Buffalo Bills team is not a playoff team. I repeat, this Buffalo Bills team is not a playoff team. And unless they prove me wrong, they're going to miss the playoffs by at least two games. They're going to miss the playoffs by at least two games unless they get their act together. They need to basically run the table. Now, the only advantage they have is that they have a win over Miami. And that came at Rich Stadium. I know it's called Highmark Stadium, but it's a rich stadium as far as I'm concerned. To deliver. This is a reality check triple header. All right. The first one goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. You definitely need one of these. In advance, I will apologize to my homie, Joshua Jackson, who has been my friend of some 13 years. I can't find my phone. Where are we? Um, Jacksonville, your team is not Super Bowl ready. Your team is not Super Bowl caliber. Because it, it and it seems to happen to a lot of teams this year. When you come up against a team that is a Super Bowl contender, you flounder. I mean, hell, you lost to the Houston Texans, who are coming along, who are coming on strong. Don't get it twisted; they're coming on very strong. I like this particular Texans team. You lost to them, but then. There was Sunday when you had a chance to show off after the bye 
and show everybody, hey, don't sleep on the Jaguars. Yeah, right. You got punched in the mouth and you got kicked in the ass by my beloved San Francisco 49ers who need a reality check of their own and they delivered one. 34 to 3. What was that, Jacksonville? What was that? Yeah, Trevor Lawrence, you got Travis Etienne, you got Calvin Ridley, and nobody did no damn thing in that game. You got swarmed. You got surrounded. You got punched in the mouth in the first half. And then the knockout blow, Brock Purdy, with the pocket collapsing, delivers a perfect pass to George Kittle, and he did the rest. 66 yards. As Joe Davis said on the Fox broadcast, George Kittle, goodbye. And they walked all over you. I feel sorry for Jacksonville because they may suffer the same fate that the Tennessee Titans suffered. This punch in the mouth that they took on Sunday. This punch in the mouth that they took on Sunday. And I might be wrong in saying this, but I will complete my thought. This punch in the mouth that they took from the 49ers on Sunday after we got our ass kicked by the Cincinnati Bengals just may signal the end of their season. And what I mean by the end of their season, no playoff berth, no division title, not a chance to regroup, reboot, nothing. In fact, I'll go ahead and call for it now and just pray that I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I will happily come on this program and any other program I'm on and say that I'm wrong. So I'm saying this statement with the hopes of being wrong. Stick a fork in the Jaguars. They're done. Mister, how do you operate this Twitter thing or this Instagram thing or whatever the heck? You're supposed to know all this stuff. Anyway, welcome back to the show. Woo! As you can tell, I kind of le- I, I let loose on that rant about James Harden. 20 after the hour. And the Deacon himself, DOD, the Deacon of Defense, has joined us. Smash the like button. Peace to you, my friend. And he also greets the underrated Danny Fuller back one more time, says Snowman Facts. And he resp- He uh, couples that with Flipper's chemistry is a joke. They will never hang a banner. And I hope they never do. I hope they never do unless ownership, unless ownership changes and unless coaching changes because all you have right now are retreads. All the Clippers have right now are retreads. Now, there's a part two to the James Harden conversation, and Brian Damaris of the Dallas Mavericks lends a big assist. Into the Clippers locker room, if I can talk to you, James. I hope you're taking notes. I'm telling you in advance, you're welcome for the wisdom I'm about to spew. Because, listen, I get on my knees every night and pray for someone to believe in me like Daryl Borey believed in you. You wanted a certain coach, they brought in Mike D'Antoni. You want to play a certain style, they played it. You wanted Dwight Howard, they brought him in and got rid of him when you were tired of him. You wanted Chris Paul, they brought him in and got rid of him when you were tired of him. They brought in your old friend Russell Westbrook. You wanted to go to Vegas on off days, they looked away. You wanted the team to stay over so you could go out at night, they changed the schedule and it didn't work. And you know what, you said, I'm gonna break up with my whoopee. Not good enough. I see the bright lights in New York. I wanna go there, my old pal, Kevin Durant. It's gonna work, the big three. And all after one year, you want it out. You realized, oh my gosh, I took this guy for granted, the guy that believed in me. I went back with Daryl Morey. They traded Ben Simmons for you. How did they pull that off? And you know what? You went there and you got a partner who got the MVP. He won the MVP. And what did you say afterwards? You said, they didn't hand me the reins. You're the point guard. You were holding the reins. And what did you do when you had the reins? You scored nine points in game seven against Boston. You blew a 3-2 series lead. So they co- they fired their coach. Not good enough. You broke up with your guy believed in you again. You said, the bright lights of L.A., that's where I want to go. Let's see if that works. Listen, James, have you ever had those friends who had bad roommates 
over and over they complained about their bad roommates. This guy's terrible, the bad roommate here. They never thought to be self-aware enough that they're the bad roommate, they're the problem. Hey James, you're the problem. <laughs> if this doesn't work this year in this system with this team, then you're gonna go and point fingers at everybody else and you're gonna go back home and you're gonna start swiping right for another team and there's not gonna be anybody left. Because James, you're not the beard, you're not the system, you're the problem. Oh, oh, and the mic drop, Devin. Damn! Breaking news. Ken Dorsey has been fired. And I talked about that earlier in the day. That Ken Dorsey wasn't the answer as the offensive coordinator of the Buffalo Bills. So long, Ken Dorsey. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out of uh, Rich Stadium. When you score less than 26 points for six straight games on a team that's known for scoring, back to the K-Gun era, out you go. Now, back to current situations. In case you missed that rant by Brian Damaris, television analyst for the Dallas Mavericks, here it is again. This into the Clippers locker room so I can talk to you, James. I hope you're taking notes. I'm telling you in advance, you're welcome for the wisdom I'm about to spew. Because, listen, I get on my knees every night and pray for someone to believe in me like Daryl Borey believed in you. You wanted a certain coach, they brought in Mike D'Antoni. You want to play a certain style, they played it. You wanted Dwight Howard, they brought him in and got rid of him when you were tired of him. You wanted Chris Paul, they brought him in and got rid of him when you were tired of him. They brought in your old friend Russell Westbrook. You want to go to Vegas on off days? They looked away. You wanted the team to stay over so you could go out at night? They changed the schedule, and it didn't work. And you know what? You said... I'm going to break up with my Whoopi. Not good enough. I see the bright lights in New York. I want to go there. My old pal, Kevin Durant. It's going to work. The big three. And all after one year, you want it out. You realize, oh, my gosh, I took this guy for granted, the guy that believed in me. I went back with Daryl Morey. They traded Ben Simmons for you. How did they pull that off? And you know what? You went there, and you got a partner who got the MVP. He won the MVP. And what did you say afterwards? You said, they didn't hand me the reins. You're the point guard. You were holding the reins. And what did you do when you had the reins? You scored nine points in game seven against Boston. You blew a 3-2 series lead. So they co they fired their coach. Not good enough. You broke up with your guy believed in you again. You said, the bright lights of L.A., that's where I want to go. Let's see if that works. Listen, James, have you ever had those friends who had bad roommates? Over and over, they complained about their bad roommates. This guy's terrible. The bad roommate here. They never thought to be self-aware enough that they're the bad roommate. They're the problem. Hey, James, you're the problem. <laughs> if this doesn't work this year in this system with this team, then you're going to go and point fingers at everybody else, and you're going to go back home, and you're going to start swiping right for another team, and there's not going to be anybody left. Because, James, you're not the beard. You're not the system. You're the problem. Oh. Bravo, Brian Damaris. Bravo. That's not only true for James Harden. That's true for a lot of players in this today NBA league. They're not, as, as he said about James Harden, you're not the beard. You're not the system. You're the problem. Just like a certain player in L.A. You're not the Kang. Let me try that voice again. You're not the Kang. You're not the system. You're the problem. Kyrie Irving in Dallas. You're not killer Kyrie. You're not the system. You're the problem. And watch. It's going to be a problem in Dallas before this season is out. Calling it now. Calling it now. Hey, if you like what you, if you like what you hear and you want to support the channel, hit that. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And... Uh, Shoot us a donation to the cash app, dollar sign, tall man, Dr. K50. Helps me, helps my organization, and most importantly, helps my family. 27 after the hour, talking James Harden and other problems in the NBA that need to go. James Harden, you need to go. Okay? Matter of fact, let me do this the, let me do this the right way because I began it last week with Victor Locke in tow, <clears throat> and I'm going to say it. The short way, the way Brian Damaris said it. James Harden, not only are you the problem, you a bitch. Period.
Period. Brian DeMera said the best. You're going to keep, you're going to get out of Los Angeles in a year when you don't hoist the championship trophy and you never will because of your style of play. You're going to keep swiping right like you're on Tinder or something. God help us all. And no one's going to be left to take a chance on you. Matter of fact, I hope before the season, the Clippers cut your, cut your punk ass and leave you nowhere to go. Don't trade. Don't make a future trade. Cut him. Eat the money. You can spend it on draft picks and just cut him. Matter of fact, there's a few players I, I would cut from the league. Quite a few. But James Harden is the concentration on this segment. And Brian Damaris, beautiful. It didn't work in Oklahoma City because you were the sixth man and you felt that you could lead a team. With, give me this. Which is bullshit. You felt you could lead a team. So you prayed for Daryl Morey to take a chance on you. Daryl Morey stupidly took a chance on you. You brought in, you had, you, you forced them to bring in Dwight Howard, who was just about out of the league. And then Damian Lillard gave you a shot in the gut and beat you in a playoff series. You had four shots, James Harden, against the Golden State Warriors. Two of them came in the Western Conference Finals. You lost them both in horrific fashion. 2015, in the clinching game for the Warriors, you committed 15 turnovers. 2018, on Memorial Day, you led by 14 and you lost by nine. The reason you're a failure in the NBA, James Harden, is you. You haven't involved, you haven't evolved, you haven't involved your game, you haven't evolved your game, and you've done nothing to improve. You held the reins as a point guard for the last 10 years, no matter which team you're on, and you f***ed it up every single doggone time. Every single time you messed it up. This is on you, James Harden. I quote the words of Brian Damaris. You're not the beard. You're not the system. You're the doggone problem. And you will always continue to be a problem unless you grow a set and acquiesce to your teammates. Some teammates on that Clippers team that could be better than you. Much better than you. There are so many players that are better than James Harden right now. It's not even funny. You went head to head with Steph Curry four times and all four times Steph Curry whooped your ass. If you hadn't had, if you hadn't had gotten traded, he'd still be whipping your ass. Matter of fact, the last time you played the Warriors in Houston on Christmas Day, you led them by 11, and they came back and kicked your ass by 12. Without Steph Curry, without Klay Thompson. How do you like them apples? You came back from a hamstring injury in 10 days. A grade two strain that should have took that should have taken you out of a playoff series against Milwaukee. That occurred when you were in Brooklyn. And then last year happened. Nine points in a seventh game. Nine. And you're supposed to be the reason the Sixers got to the championship series. And then you <laughs> your way out of Philadelphia, as predicted. And you wind up in Los Angeles, and you're going to wind up <laughs> your way out of Los Angeles to go to another team. And I hope every team in the NBA slams the door in your face. You don't deserve to be in the NBA anymore. You don't deserve a shot to be the top guy, to be the point guard of any team, because you can't play the position correctly. You never will play the position correctly. And I'm heaping all this on a certain player tomorrow. So y'all watch out for that. But for right now, James Harden, you a bitch. You always will be a bitch forever and ever. Amen. Have a great day. God bless. Remember to make your next move your best move. And always remember, if your dreams don't scare you, they are simply not big enough. Dream big, do bigger. We are. We hope you all are, too. We are out of here. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you tomorrow.